back with the shade. Brand new CTS, I read like the brave. Boom, 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 boom. Good Friday, good Friday, good Friday, good Friday. Okay, we know it's a good Friday. You know why? First and foremost, 21 dropped. Metro dropped. You know, I know we are basketball, we are hoops podcast, but let's this, get some culture. Let's get some culture in here. 21 dropped. Okay. Um, and you know, that's my favorite rapper, so it's not like anybody else matters. But just to give everybody else their flowers, so to speak. Um, who else notably dropped? We we got anniversary from Bryson. Yeah. I'm not saying it's mid, but it's not the best pack I ever smoked. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, look, 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 look. Who who else dropped? Uh, Jivian. Yeah, YG. YG did drop. I need to listen to that. Alchemist. You did? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fabio. You know, New York going up. Some of some of the people out there might be haters. He don't got no bars. It doesn't matter. The song lit. The video lit. It's just about being lit. So we'll go tune into that plug in. But you know, enough of that culture. Enough of that culture. What I want to do is I want to get into something that's been weighing on me. It's been weighing on my mind. Um, and, you know, as a whole. Before you get into that. Didn't even do introductions yet. You're right. You all know me. It's Clifford Manny, a.k.a. Right Hand Jesus, a.k.a. Moves.com, a.k.a. Been a sad boy for about a week. <laughs> That's why his mind is so flustered, America. Because I'm not prepared to do this. I'm not. Emotionally, I didn't think this is where I would be. Like, when we recorded the last episode, I thought this would be a very different pod. (laughs) I did. Crying. You know, and you could say it's pride. You could say it's, you know, as a Homer instinct. But, you know, I feel like, you know what? Let me not get into that yet. First topic of conversation. I lied. See, I'm so flustered. <laughs> Please introduce yourselves, boys. Bro, I'm just too we're much. We're going to have to carry the pod yeah, today, bro. Chris. Sorry. I just, pods, I bro. just can't, bro. It's your boy, Cash Manny. You know, Mr. Prestige. Speaking of, this video is sponsored by Prestige. Prestige. Get your, get get your, get your, get your floral, purple floral neck know, gator. Yo. It's spook season, so look out for that. We dropping stuff new. You know? Link is going to be in whatever is below this YouTube thing right here. So link, links will be right yeah, like, not, somewhere. Somewhere it, right it's there. It's gonna be there. Yeah, Don't you know what it is. Sevo, aka Young Post Up, Young Fade, aka Job Not Finished, <laughs> aka Lakers Propaganda, aka Lakers in three. <laughs> so, okay, oh, oh, that's not oh, that far fetched. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know what it is. Let's get this pod going. Hyped up for twenty one. You know that meme. It's time now. You know that meme of that fat guy with no neck where he's just breathing up. That's how I feel. So. You're right. Let's get into this. First topic of conversation. Conference finals done. All right. It's over. The winners moved on. The losers went home. Some people are in Calabasas. Some people are fighting it out in Orlando. And some people are getting beat the fuck up in Orlando. (laughs) But that's a little later. Let's talk about the Western Conference finals. The first person to get a word in right now is the man who accurately predicted yet another series. And that man is... Big Sev over there, Sevo. Go ahead and talk to us about it, Sev. So, um, we went into the, you know, we went into the conference finals, right? As expected, as I'm sure, oh, well, as I thought most people would think, it wasn't going to be a tough one, but it was a tough one at the same time. Lakers came out, you know, game one, punched in the mouth. Normally, that's what happens when uh, teams aren't used to our size and aggression. We come out in the regular season. That's what we did a lot, especially in the beginning of the season. Come out, punch them in the nose. Game two, it's tough. But we're wearing mama jersey, so it don't matter. (laughs) AD for the win. Game three, you know, sloppy. Win the last two games the way we should. Uh, Bro. Back in the finals, like, uh, I thought it would feel different. I'm or, I'm sorry. I thought it would feel like it used to feel when we were winning. But it it really doesn't feel like anything right now. Like, it's really all about the chip. 
So it's just, it, it, just feel, it just feels like empty success. Yeah, it feels empty. You know, like, we got to win a chip. Like, all this beating other teams doesn't matter unless it results in a, in a dub. So I'm just happy for LeBron getting back to the finals. You don't care about LeBron. No, I am. I do, because now he's a Laker. And 9 out of 10 years going to the finals is OD. And then for AD, AD wins a chip, and he becomes, you know, one of my favorite Lakers of all time. That so, quick? Yeah. Does he hop over B.I.? Whoa, he's been over B.I. You're, <laughs> You're crazy. Are you crazy? Like, we're talking What happened to all that favorite player talk, bro? He is one of my favorite players. One of? Yo. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my, sure. how the mighty have fallen you gotta, off. You got to understand something. Brad did work harder. Nah. <laughs> he can do that, and he could win, and he still wouldn't be. Because at the end of the day, I'm a Laker fan, and Laker fans, what they want is... That so just to be clear, talent, that level of talent, okay, and the okay, level of okay. Success. You know, let's stay on this topic. Let's stay here. I find it so interesting. Does that mean your love for a player fluctuates? Fluctuates, excuse me, based off if they play for your franchise or not. Based off, well, no, because no, it doesn't. It but doesn't. There are two different things you're saying. You asked me if he's one of my favorite players, which he is. Yeah, I said AD would be one of my favorite Lakers ever. That's the two different things. Okay, oh, somebody the brought their thinking cap here, and it is what it is. Somebody brought their thinking cap. I couldn't slip them up. I'm sorry. But obviously, I can't day, be a there are levels journalist. There are levels, man. And AD, like you can't talk about anybody else when it comes to like that level of talent. Like there's only a few people in that discussion of level of talent in terms of all time and recent. Exactly. So it's just like I can't be comparing him to just anybody. And when it comes down to it, like Lakers expect championships so they're in the they're in the finals i respect the nuggets od <clears throat> they really fought us to the very end i mean even as they're getting blown out but you know it's tough to do when you're when your two best players are in the position of our two best players it's gonna suck for you so that's all i have to say about that i i mean i predicted this in five a lot of people were like, oh, the Nuggets are going to come back 3-1, 3-1. No, that's, that only happens on teams that aren't really teams. That only happens on teams that... Just say the Clippers. <laughs> but it, it it happened to the Jazz. It happened to the Clippers. Stop right now. I understand that. But I we just, all have an underlying knowledge that we are here to slander the Clippers when slander comes up. <laughs> It's bigger than the Clippers for me. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Yo, he, he ain't lying, ladies and gentlemen. So, he ain't uh, lying. I respect Jokic. I think the Nuggets played some of the best basketball in the playoffs. And yo, we should get around to ranking who played the best basketball in the playoffs eventually. But uh, yeah, more pro- like power to him. Power to uh, Jamal. He came out crazy. He came out looking. You know, he came out like he was an all star. Like he meant he was supposed to be in that moment, supposed to be doing those very things. So true, true. I respect all of it. And I mean, the better team won. We've been winning based on defense. We have the best defense in the league and it showed. So that's my recap on uh conference finals. Don't think you got away, Chris. Oh yeah, Chris. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Chris. Wait, where your nuggets jersey at? Yeah, bro. Hmm? All that mellow propaganda. All that I have burn it. Oh, but it's hanging up in our room. What are you talking about? It's hanging up. I saw it this morning when I woke up. I mean, I'm not going to show Ew. public, like, be private yeah. pictures to the public. But well, private pictures? What private so pictures? Of Everything. our room? The intimacy of the room? I understand that, bro. But are the, you crazy? This jersey isn't up there anymore. What are you talking It was there this morning. What are you so talking about? What bro? you're so saying you're, is you flopped and you, you flopped on your team. Well, all right. So let's move. You're a Nuggets fan right. now? Oh, okay. Whoa, okay. Right, so, don't, so don't do that. Don't do that. So yeah. what's your don't take on do this? Don't do what? We know you all don't do that. You know I'm a diehard OKC fan. Ever since oh. Gary Harris hit that game winner, you switched up, huh? <laughs> 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 wow, okay. All right. What was your yeah. take? Don't worry, bro. Hmm? What was your take? <clears throat> My take? Uh, well, Blakers I mean- and no, I lied. It was Denver and seven, wasn't it? It was Denver and seven. Wow, my Denver mistake. I thought you made a good decision, but you made a poor yeah, one. Yeah, I made it. Why did we give you got a brick sound? Get, why? Why am Not I being yet, attacked? Bro. All right, we'll all right. You know what? Nah, get your jabs in now, Cliff, because you know what's coming up next, bro. Oh, we don't want to talk about that. Oh, okay. Talk about nah, yeah, yeah, I do because I need I need a palate cleanse. <laughs> I need a palate cleanse. But you know what? You say what you got to say about you, how this went. Honestly, not surprised at all. 
I mean, was I hoping it for for it to go to seven and then to come back down? <laughs> yes, that was a dream, and it didn't come true. You know dreams what's crazy? Can only be dreams. I'm gonna sorry to cut you off. I know when the dream died because we were in in the house watching the game when the dream officially died. When was that? It was game two when AD got loose for the game winner because we were like, Yo. it was at <laughs> this moment that he knew. He like up. after game at, two, who was it? Mason? It was Mason Plumley. It was. Right? It was not, bro. bro. It's, and then <laughs> me and Seven have discussed this, and he was like, "Well, that's a big." So his instinct is to protect the rim, but it's just like, for the life of me, I just couldn't understand why he just gave up. <laughs> like, the, he, bro, he, he like I would have felt better about the game winner if he had a hand up. Bro, like, he saw LeBron. He was like, "Jeremy, go get that." <laughs> yeah, nah, that's a that's a fact. That's exactly <laughs> what he said. He said, "No pick needed." He just dropped down onto LeBron. He said, "Jeremy, <laughs> Jeremy, go cover." Threw him a lifeline, bro. So it was at that moment I knew it might be clipped. Because I was like, if the series was tied, I hope you choke on that. Bro, I'm not If the lie. series was tied, 1-1. I remember when I woke up the morning, the, the Lakers won, one, and one. it was... We would have won in five. <laughs> remember I woke up, uh, like, one of the mornings during this year, after a game. It was 3-1. I was like, oh, my gosh! And then I remembered, oh, wait, it's the Lakers. Never the mind. Lakers. Yeah. It's not Paul George they're going to see. Mm. This is LeBron. We don't, bro. We don't. Mr. 38, 16, and 10 in a closeout game. We're not that taking time on this pod oh, to talk about the so trash refreshing. Clippers, bro. You're right. But we don't. De- they don't deserve Paul George to get slander. You suck. But <laughs> I think that <laughs> we really need to discuss one of the more impressive things, okay, about that whole series. Mm-hmm. And that is the fact. That LeBron James is very clearly the best player in the world. It don't matter. It don't matter. It doesn't matter, bro. Age, attrition, new teams, dynasties, none of it matters. This 17-year run going on 18, he might have a 23-year run, bro. Yeah. Yeah, LeBron's a robot. Bro, based off what I've seen and how he's played this year, because like you said, there were times this year LeBron looked old, right? Oh, for sure. But it was a regular season since the bubble started. Like, since the playoffs in the bubble started. How has he looked? Uh, For some of it, you got to keep in mind, LeBron hasn't played over – he he hasn't averaged over – He doesn't minutes. need to. He hasn't averaged over 40 minutes. He hasn't really put a lot of shots Exactly. Up. Bro. He's not really like – 2018 LeBron, like, if – you see what happened in 2018. 2018 LeBron, to do, yeah. He doesn't have to do that, but at the same time, it's just like it can be taken like, oh, why isn't he doing doing the thing? It's highly recommended that he does that. Yo, but think about this, right? Think about (laughs) this. It's not mandatory. The trend of the league now, sorry to get a little off topic, but usually the MVP comes from the best team most of the time or one of the better teams. Yeah. And usually the best teams are so good that their MVP all-star doesn't play close to 40 minutes. Giannis, Steph. The, The asterisks have been out of the last 10 Probably LeBron, who always plays heavy minutes. Yeah. And Russ. 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 And I didn't I don't know James Harden's and K D and Harden. K D K D the one year when Russ wasn't there. Yeah. yeah. That was twenty. I would say it's only been like that since we got these super crazy freaks yeah. of nature. And Steph Curry shooting is a freak of nature. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Shout out Steph. We, later later on a different episode, we're gonna have to really go into how the Warriors are gonna come back because I feel like people are a little asleep on that. Yeah. Um sleep. But uh yeah, you were saying. Uh yeah. Uh Chris, were you done discussing uh, uh, uh not just Lakers? LeBron is great. He's very great and it's so yes. it's, it's really great to see that. Yeah, man. Just you know. It's fun to be blessed with greatness. Yeah. Um. Look, Nuggets Lakers went kind of like everybody assumed or saying people should have thought it would win. I thought they could get six off the Lakers. I thought game two was the sixth game that I thought they would get off the Lakers. They didn't. AD hit a game winner, so they went home in five. Jokic, after the series is done, we can now say this because I remember mid-series we said Jokic and then AD in terms of best big man. But after the last couple of performances, mm-hmm. AD is very clearly the best big man in the league. How and much did he score in the fourth quarter of the <coughs> final two games? I'm like the final two games, Jokic was not a non-factor in the, in the fourth zero. quarter. Zero points. And people can, casuals are going to attribute that to, oh, see, AD was playing both sides of the floor. No, credit Dwight Howard. Credit Frank Vogel for starting Dwight Howard. In the fourth quarter, we put AD you did? at the five. We at the five? AD at the five? You do? Yeah, we do. And it's not. And that's the I'm thing. talking about in the last game. 
He was the one guarding Jokic most of the time. The last game we played was a blowout, so it didn't really matter. Okay, so game four then. Game four, he had zero points, and I think AD still was at the five for most of that. For most of it? Okay, then give AD credit. White starts those fourth quarters, and then it's just like, we'll bring him back if need be. And he, actually, he did play a couple of mm-hmm. possessions late in the game. I thought I saw him in late in the game, bro. But we That's what I'm saying. play AD at the five in crunch time. Well, either way, four or five, best big man in the game is Anthony Davis. Nikola Jokic. Respect, bro. Respect. Because mm-hmm. you're the second best big man in the league in a league with Joel Embiid, who should be the best big man in the league. We're going to get into that later. We're going to get into a little bit of that later. Yeah. But, you know, like I said, my thoughts on it, I thought it would go six. Game two was lost, so it went five. Credit to Jokic. Credit to Jamal. All right? It's very hard for guards to thrive against the Lakers. Credit to his size. God bless you for being 6'5", to have at least some games where you're able to go off. But, you know... It uh against LA, it's not enough. You need everything. Yeah. You need everything. You need to play damn near perfect to beat that team. And the Nuggets got into a habit of playing their non perfect games and then throwing up a string of like perfect games to continue the series. And it's like game five, LA came in and said, Yeah, nah, this is not the game where you're gonna play a perfect game. game I would say game four, because if you remember, like game two, we didn't like it was an yeah, energy thing. Game, and that's why mm-hmm. I believe like even if they did win that game, like it would have still been over in five because we didn't. I, it would have been over in five because we didn't come out with the assertiveness in game two. We were like, <clears throat> maybe we can just win it based off of our greatness, mm-hmm. and that didn't happen. And you cannot do that against another team typically. But this team is a great team, so yeah. But yeah. Uh, also, one more thing to credit Jamal and Jokic for. I'm pretty sure they led the postseason in minutes played oh, yeah. by <laughs> far. I don't even. We played game one of the finals, I, and I think they still. Yeah, they still. They're still ahead of. Yeah. They're still ahead of everybody in the finals. Like I think you're gonna catch up to them around game two, three, mm-hmm. if it's a close contested game. But if the series goes how it went in game one, <laughs> it might take till game four to catch up. Let's let's not get to that. Let's not get to that. Yet. Let's get to these. Okay. Uh, look. Let me start this one off. Disappointment, hurt, pain, sad, anger. Fraud. Disgust. And at the end of the day, <clears throat> it's respect. Did the season end the way the Celtics wanted the season to end? How I thought the season would end? No, nowhere close. And that will always be the disappointment. And then I sat back and looked at our season as a whole. I sat back and thought about where we were projected to be. I sat back and thought about what everybody thought we were going to be. And at the end of the day, the disappointment of everybody stings. There's disappointment for myself. I expected more from Kemba Walker. He's a big disappointment. He didn't have a single signature postseason moment. The one signature postseason moment he could have had was stolen by OG Ananobi's three-pointer with .5 on the clock. (laughs) But other than that, and, and I'm pretty sure as a Celtics fan, because I'm a Celtics fan, I'll remember that play, but history won't. Because he didn't win. So first postseason for Kemba's disappointing. And at the end of the day, I looked at another stat. We were the youngest team average age in the postseason. Our bench consisted of Enos Cantor, Brad Wan. <sighs> well, it's okay, He's bro. Old. He's old. He's old. He's like yeah, no, no, no. I was using Enos Cantor and Brad Wanamaker. I said Enos Cantor, Brad Wanamaker, and either rookies or youngins. Oh, are they the oldest like, on the team? Enos and Brad? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Because Kemba's like 28. Kemba's still in his 20s? Is he 28 or 29? 30. He's 30 now? Yeah, he's like 30. Either way, he's still younger than Brad. <laughs> it pains you every time you have to it say It pains his me name. every time I have to say his name, man. And <clears throat> the worst thing about this, the Eastern Conference Finals, was this. We flopped so badly. Not just, you know, not not in terms of, like, fouls and shit. I mean, like, the team as a whole. <laughs> Y'all be flopping. <laughs> Y'all I mean, everybody flopping. does. Everybody does. I'm not Y'all honest. be flopping. What Marcus does is an art Kemba form. Kemba Walker is a flopper. Kemba got Kemba didn't get calls the whole postseason. He had to resort to stop it, start Don't embellishing stop calls. It, stop it. He had stop to. It. He's had. He had to. He had to. Bro. Calls. He had to. Bro. Most bullshit. Bro, calls the only the, the only reason you're saying that is literally because of game. What's it called? I can point to multiple games. Relax. I can point to multiple games. Did I not tell? I didn't say I was going first. 
Right. So oh, okay. Thank you. Out. So I'm like, just I, trying to keep you in check. Keep me in you, check. The Celtics oh, okay. propaganda. Celtics propaganda. The truth. Bro, it's not. Bro, it's sometimes bro, it overshadows it's, look, the truth. Here it is. Here it is, bro. As I said, you know what? Just be happy that you get a buy. Like in the NFL, you get a buy week. Except the, the Miami Heat are a buy. The Miami Heat are a buy week. To y'all. But they beat us, right? So, exactly. I just don't understand, man. It's like you sit down and you think about it, and it's just like, why make these bums look so good when we know the truth? And then I had to sit down one day, and I had to think about it one day this week, and I was like, oh, my God. If we can't make bums look like bums, does that mean we're bums too? (laughs) Uh, but I can't allow myself to go down that dark rabbit hole, bro, because it would be too sad. But like I said, we got further than most people predicted before the bubble started and everybody lost faith in Milwaukee and everybody else. But it's still overall, it's disappointing. It sucks. And the worst part about it is we didn't lose to the Heat. We didn't lose to Jimmy Butler in the Heat. We lost to Tyler Hero, we lost to Goran Dragic, and we lost to Bam Adebayo. We didn't lose to Jimmy Butler, and that's what hurts me the most. Mm. So if you ask me individually, in terms of my opinion, how the series or how how I feel about the Eastern Conference Finals, for us it was a shit show, and we should go home and be unhappy and continue to be unhappy and hopefully come back better next season because we had no business losing to a team like that. All credit to Eric Spolster, though. Very happy for that man because Eric Spolster is going to get the the accolades he deserves. He's going to get the recognition he deserves. He didn't just make the finals because he had LeBron James, okay? He's a very good coach. He's a Hall of Fame coach. And if you didn't know that before, get in tune, all right? Pat Riley is the mafia boss of the NBA still. Nothing has changed that. My man has been in the in the finals for every like there was a stat on ESPN. He's been in the final for every decade since the seventies or eighties. It was something crazy, bro. Probably the eighties. It's mm-hmm. crazy. Like as a player, as a coach, as an exec, as a coach again, as a as, as a, a player, then it's probably the seventies. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like he went to the finals as a player, bro. It's crazy. Pat Riley is a mafia boss. <laughs> if I pull up to an Italian restaurant and sat at the wrong spot, and I had the option of calling somebody and they could come and show up and protect me. I'm calling Patty boy. Pat Riley, Riley. Boy, Patty boy, bro. Oh, I'm going to call shit. Pat, the OG, man. And, you know, but other than that, it's like I, I gave credit to credits due, and before people start getting on me, Jimmy, like I said, Jimmy ain't done nothing to impress me, which is why this hurts so much. He didn't have a single 30 piece. He didn't have game. a single 30 piece. He ain't do none of that. We, we, we got beat by a rookie, a veteran European point guard. And another rookie. And another rookie. And I'm going to give credit to Eric Spolstra. Because regardless of how much I respect Brad, you can't get your players to play the right way for like four games. Coaching comes into question too. And I love Brad. I love Brad so much. But I got to be honest. I got to be honest. Y'all can speak on it. I just feel like you guys, it got to a certain point for me where it felt like you guys just didn't want to win anymore. Like in Game Six, the la- the final moments of Game <sighs> Six reminded me of um 2018. 2018. 2018. 2018 started herking up shots, and it's just like you don't need to do that. It was like there's, why herk up threes bro, with four minutes? Yeah, left? there's still time. Why start the jacking de- up threes? And the moment they started doing it, the deficit was like like it was it was it like, was manageable. We yeah. were down by eight with exactly, four minutes bro. left, so and I, they started herking up threes, bro. The end, bro. Yeah, and like. That's just, I think that's like, bro. There's yeah, so that's, much time, but I was just like, the I craziest like they part just about gave up. the craziest part about game six to me is against because the Heat started playing zone heavy in that game, and everything before because even leading up to that point in the fourth, like actually leading up to like the six seven minute mark, we were the better team. We were busting the zones ass, bro. I was oh, like, we're hot. we yeah, were going yeah, we're crazy. Going then Jimmy off, Jimmy undercut Jalen a little bit. I was worried he came back. Then they did a couple more defensive stops and scores. I'm like, yeah, this they- is what you want. And then you just start letting them get easy shots up. They let Tyler Hero score 12 in the fourth. Bro, they weren't disciplined. I mean, and like I said, 
Shout out to finals MVP Andre Iguodala for deciding he wanted to hit four he, threes. It was but, gonna be like there was yeah, gonna there was gonna be that one, there one was, player that was just gonna do that. You, for it to, that. you can much like 2018 in this game seven. Yeah, Je- we we who, Jeff, who Green Jeff Green came and bit Green, us right? in the ass, and yeah. now Andre Iguodala's exactly. non-shooting ass came and decided <laughs> to be Ray Allen. But sure, <laughs> things like that I can look That's like. Respectful to Ray. <laughs> so what going four for four? That's one hundred percent one. That's one hundred percent one. But Ray Allen's shots aren't wide open from the top of the key. <laughs> so disrespectful. Four for four is one hundred percent. That's I, I feel like I paid him. Oh I, I feel like I, I paid him respect. Like I, that's a great shoot. See how they do uh, their legends. Who? You know what? Don't don't get me started on this, bro. Please. I'm at a place now where I can at least be healthy about mentioning him. I'm dead. <laughs> don't try to take me somewhere hateful. Nah, but don't do that. Game six was just, it felt in very inconsistent because they would just go off and then they would be terrible and they go off again and then they were just terrible at the wrong moment. Like I said, our best and their best was so vastly different. I was just like, there's no way we don't win this series. The problem is we didn't decide to play at our best for a lot of that series. And it wasn't even a lot, excuse me. We didn't play the best when it counted. Because in the, the second, third, a lot of things, like in the first halves, a lot of time, like we were up. We were we looked like the better team. And then when the chips went down, they started coming back like any NBA team does who has pride. You got to buckle down and step on their throats. Look at what the Lakers did. Bro, look at the, Look at what the Lakers did to every single team who tried to do that. Look at the series before you versus Miami against Toronto. I mean, granted, you guys were up, but still, like, when the chips were down and when it came down to it, you guys went out and you won game seven like you needed to. Yeah, and there wasn't the same level of urgency and aggression and dedication to attacking the defense. Exactly. Like I said, when you, I guess it it sneaks up on everybody, the fear of loss. You start going into hero shots. You start going into home home run shooting. But it's like as professional athletes, as people who have bigger aspirations in the conference finals, you always got to play the right way until the end. You always got to play Celtics basketball. You always got to do what you, what ethics and what routines and what skill set, whatever you practice in the offseason, everything you've built up during the year, that's what you got to go to. You don't go to, oh, I need to take this shot because this is our only hope. Mm-hmm. Not with four minutes left. It's not a game on the line situation yet. And I guess that's what it means to have veterans in your locker room. True, true. Yeah. I'm assuming that's what it means. I mean, the veterans didn't really. Well. Yeah, that was a good segue. That is a very good segue because looking at this series, all right, going back like Clip said, like beginning of the year, Boston was going to be a tough team. There was always Giannis. There was the thought of Philly. There was a obvious like the Raptors aren't like going to roll over, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Looking at it, like, I thought y'all were going to get to the finals. To, no, not to the finals. Um, To, like, the conference finals. I was, like, in my head, I was just, like, all right. Because this year it seemed like the East was going to be tough. Yeah. It seemed like the 76ers were going to get their act together. It seemed like the Raptors were going to do enough to get into the semifinals and really make it hard. And who knows, threaten a, threaten somebody and get into the finals. The Bucks, mm-hmm. obviously, and then Boston for sure. And the reason why I said that, was just because of the talent. But in the series, it kind of looked like too many cooks in the kitchen and then no actual leader. Like, we would say Kemba's the experienced guy or even Hayward. Hayward's in and out with injury. Kemba, Kemba's not a veteran like people think he is. He's not, like, postseason yeah, he, he has the least amount. Of, he has the least yeah. amount of postseason experience outside the rookies. Exactly. So with that, a lack of passing on the team generally, just from a standpoint of like Hayward wasn't there for a lot of it. Exactly. Mm. So, uh, and then also, yeah. So those are some of the things that stood out to me: passing, experiencing, experience, and coaching. So when I look at this series, Brad. Stevens got out coached, point blank period, because in the first two games, and people talk about it all the time, Celtics fans are like, "Oh, these players are so dumb." 
you're a professional NBA player, you should be able to beat a zone. Well, if it's not working, and if you're not beating a zone, what is the coach going to do? Just let them figure it out on their own, or are they going to switch it up? I mean, it took until game four to see Jason Tatum in the in the in the middle of a zone, or some of Hayward, a some of Tice. I saw what y'all were doing with like the wing with the wing screening the wing on the on the two three because Miami do, does something that is actually <coughs> peculiar in the two three. They put their big wings wings on the, on the exactly so yeah, yeah. that way they can deter anything going into the paint. But they keep Bam Adebayo so low in the paint. There's I'm so thinking, much space. There's so much space. Get it? But what what is lacking there? Passing. Passing. And then what is lacking after that? The coach on the floor. And the Celtics just don't have that. We look at like look at all the teams that overachieved. Jokic. Jokic is out here controlling games. Chris Paul. Chris Paul is controlling games. Mm-hmm. Like you look at these teams that like made it further than you thought they would. Kyle Lowry controlling games. So, and then when you look at Miami Heat, I've been giving so much crap to Jimmy Butler for not being the player that I thought he was, which was like, you're in the mold of, you're in Wade County. Look at D Wade and do what he did. And that's not what his job was. It's it's more reminiscent of like a Magic Johnson like or, or a, a LeBron James, get the teammates involved. He kind of controls the game that way. Because even though it's run out of Adebayo, Jimmy is really, if he calls for the ball, they're getting him that ball. Yeah, he seems like the primary ball handler. Exactly. So I'm looking at that. So, like, the experience and then finally like the coaching, the experience, and then just the passing. That, that to me, stuck out. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Like, Pam Adebayo showed up. He sprained his shoulder in, the, in game four or in game five, came out and dropped 32 and 14. He started to play like Giannis because all this time, the threats on the floor weren't out of bio. Y'all were playing the Miami Heat offense. Then it was just like, okay, y'all were catching up to that. Mm-hmm. And then Bam was like, wait a minute, I'm gonna act like I'm I'm gonna be a useful big yeah, bro, and he do something like he was the best player on the floor. Exactly, bro. and he was in that game. So I'm looking at it. I'm just like, I don't think y'all overachieved, underachieved. I just think y'all need a couple more years. I think this is the year now because. The expectation was not there in terms of like just who didn't have expectations. Everyone except for you guys, like everyone except for you guys, thought y'all were exactly where we thought you would be. Because had we expected, we expected the 76ers to be there. I never did. We expected the Raptors to also be there. We expected. I never did. We expected the Bucks to be there. We expected y'all to be there. I thought. I thought it would be the Bucks we were seeing. Mm. Yeah, and either way, like. That was because you all four of those teams, except I'm sorry, three of those teams, because the Raptors are like the veteran of the Eastern Conference. Like, <clears throat> three of those t- super talented teams were all super young, all super inexperienced and playing themselves in the playoffs. You get that playoff experience in terms of like you see what your weaknesses are, but you're not going up against someone that's like like it's like 2018 was like LeBron looking at the East and being like, I'm better than all of you by myself this year from here on out. It's just like who's going to be that next guy. Mm-hmm. And we thought it was going to be honest. You know, we thought it was going to be, we didn't really have any expectations after that. Jason Tatum came out and it was just like, okay, he's being the best player. But yeah, just like in those fourth quarters with Kawhi and PG, no one really expected Jason Tatum to be like, oh, he's going to be that guy. Like now he has those expectations. I mean, I kind of expected that. I would say. I very much so expected that. Well, he. I mean, the thing is, why is no one getting on him? You didn't even mention him in, in game six. You didn't mention his fourth quarter performance at all. Why? Because you don't have those expectations you would expect from Kawhi. You don't have those expectations you would expect from a talent level, like someone who's been in the year. I, incorrect. Ten, incorrect. You didn't I, mention it at all. You know why? Because my love for these kids. <laughs> all right. All right, all all right. So you're glossing over that. All right. But that's what I'm saying. That's why I have Look you here. That's no, why no. you're here. Oh that's literally why you're here. Nope. Right. This here, is why this you're is opposite of me on the podcast. Roll it back. This is like, what are you talking about? You want me to slander my kids? Yeah, like, what are you talking back. about? Bring, bring it back. We gave Kawhi Leonard slander because he is a fine. Because he deserves MVP it. And he deserves it. We gave Very Paul so. George slander in, and he deserves it because he is a type of player who has that exceptional talent, who has that exceptional athleticism. He is top 1% in terms of those talents in the league. And he's been, like, he has been to the conference finals before. He has been fourth in MVP voting. 
That's Game all. Has that's has look. Not that's any. all well and good. <laughs> like, but at the at the end of the day, we know seventy five percent of the Paul George slander is coming because yes, you underperformed in the postseason, but you also gave yourself a nickname. All right, all right so fine. So, so the slander cares? has to come. All right. So and you're right. You talks at the you're wrong right. times. You're that's right. why we slander. Kind of, kind of Kawhi hasn't himself. said a word, and he deserves every single slander. He that's got. a final. Yeah. That's a that's a two time final MVP. He, okay, he's going to get the slander. All right. But we don't put that. We're slandering Giannis. He's an MVP in this league. All right. But you think Jason Tatum is better than Giannis. Yes, I do. So where's the slander from people? People don't slander him at all. Why? Because we don't, deep inside, we don't have that, like, oh, he is the best in our hearts right now. Now it's just like he has the expectation, so he can be. So you're saying we're giving him, the, the media was giving him the KD treatment before it was like, okay, now he got to start winning. No, because it's his only third year in the league. Yeah, I know. And that's the thing. People need to slow down. Just like looking at Giannis, like, oh, you haven't won in, what, four years? Okay, But so that's what? the thing. I, like, the way I look at Jason at James Tatum. Harden, he still hasn't won anything. This is true. So why are we putting, and that's what I'm saying, like, <clears throat> we don't slander Jason Tatum because he doesn't deserve the slander. He doesn't deserve the slander. He does. Next year, he has expectations because Generally speaking, he hasn't had that. And I guarantee you, I think he's going to pull through. Also, one thing. Yes, we could slander him for, you know, the turnovers and everything. But 26, 10, and 5 on the postseason run. Just in case anybody didn't know that. 26, 10, and 5. And and Jalen Brown. Was our best player in the series. Exactly. Was our best player in the series. If 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 you have great production from Jason Tatum, great production from Jalen Brown, and you're still not winning, Something else is up. And that's why I think Brad Stevens has actualized, like, he's reached his potential. I think he's the Mark Jackson. Like, he's hit his ceiling? I think he's not the guy that takes your great players and then he's the type of guy to mold players. I don't think he's the type of guy to bring them to the next level. What? I just, I just, that's the gist that I'm getting. Because if you can't figure out a fucking 2 3 zone, you don't deserve to be in the conference finals. You know, like if you have supposedly the best defense in the East, because Boston fans will claim it and they deserve it because Marcus Smart's on that team, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown is on that team. Mm-hmm. They have so many great defenders. Like, why aren't you clamping down on the Miami Heat team? Well, a Miami Heat team who is not like, like a super offense. They're not. They're really so not. So who's to blame here? Like, who's to blame? Because no one's blaming anyone, and I don't think Jason deser- Jason Tatum deserves any blame because he's he's twenty six. 10 and 5. That's nothing really left to be said. Who's our best So player? who's who's it on? Oh, my fault. Who's Hang on. One second. Answer mm-hmm. that. Hang on one second. Uh, uh, 1.2 blocks and a steal. All right. So, who's okay, so the, he's their best player. So who is... That's what I'm saying. And you know yeah. what? And we can blame Kemba Walker, but Kemba Walker was never experience. that guy, bro. What y'all... I think what you guys needed was the person who was like a Marcus Smart, but... A person who's going to control the offense because Jason Tatum isn't there yet because he hasn't been like he's become he's he is the focal point of the offense, but now he has to lead a team. And you're asking someone in their third year to do that, you're crazy. You know, Even I don't care who it is. D Wade had Shaq and Alonzo Mourning and exactly. all these all these veterans. So right. we're gonna and that's the thing. Like this very may may well have been like a D Wade kind of situation, mm. but if you look at the vets on their team. There, no, there was no Kendrick Perkins, you know? There was no uh, Udonis Haslam. Like, who on that team was going to be like, look, I've been there, I've done that, and I'm going to help you be the best you? Because maybe maybe that's why I'm, I'm slipping on Brad Stevens, because maybe that's not his job. I think it is. I think when you have great talent, your coach is supposed to do that. But at the same time, the roster construction point of view is just like, well, you got Brad Wanamaker at the off the bench. You got Cantor, who's never done anything except for offensive rebound and have a great post game. You have Kemba Walker, who you, you're paying forty million, one hundred and forty million for four years, and he's thirty oh, years gosh, old. Gosh, it's four years, and he's never been. I'm not mad. We gave him all that, that money. Guy. It's just I expected more in the postseason for him. I did. I don't know. Mm-hmm. All I know is. Like in terms of his production or his nah, leadership? No, because, because he brought up his age when he brought up the contract. But my whole thing okay. is, it wasn't any everything he did in the postseason, it wasn't, he wasn't failing because of age and attrition. He was failing because he just wasn't doing what we're accustomed to seeing him do. And you could attribute that to up in the playoff defense and everything like that. But a lot of the shots he was missing are shots that were his bread and butter. 
Danny Ainge said it was based off the attrition thing. The the attrition in age? Yeah, not age, but his knee. Mm. That's a way. That's a good way to cover. But it's just like I saw him when he came back in the bubble and how we rested him and everything. And I saw him in the first round against Philly. So it's like, yeah. Mm. And then he looked really good against Toronto. And then they threw. He's looked terrible since Toronto threw a, a box and one out. Yeah. Like he's looked bad since then. But before that, he looked great. He looked amazing. Like the step was there, the burst against, was there. Against against Philly. Oh, I forget. No, Philly I'm saying like when ex- yeah. exactly like it's not like we were just like of course we were gonna beat Philly. I don't want to sit here and say those games weren't close. We talked about it. The defense was there, it was good. He's been flustered and and uh what's it called? The Raptors threw out a box and one in game um in game four. I think it was game three or four. That, nah, it wasn't the first two games. He was killing. I think like, they, he was killing. They threw out, oh, they threw out a couple different zones. They threw out a bunch of different zones and then they resorted to box and one. I think mm. they did in the game box three and or one four. In the earlier in the game when he would be the only when you have two of your main guys in instead of your four main guys. Which I mean at that point Hayward wasn't there. Yeah, but I remember like I remember him looking really good and comfortable in the first two games against Toronto. And then game three. It got close against Toronto like we all thought it would. And then he made those, he made big plays in the fourth quarter. Big plays. So I was just like, he's good. And then the game winner happened. And then ever since game four of the Raptors series, he just didn't look the same. I don't know. I think y'all had a great run, though. I don't know. You did. Yeah, like, y'all really did. Not, eh, people can say that. And like I said, I don't want to take anything away from Miami, but we lost to Miami in six, so. I think Miami's better than what you got. That's the thing. That's another thing. You guys weren't playing your best basketball. We weren't. Miami was also not as bad as you guys thought. And No, I was, remember I we talked about it. I said Miami's playing the best basketball. Like some of the best basketball in the whole entire postseason. So I was yeah. like, this is going to be the test for us that that could prepare us for y'all. We talked about this. And they so have I didn't guys that actually have been there. You guys Yeah. Not, well, you guys have had, I mean, obviously going 2018, right? But other than that, it's just like, and I mean, 2019, you go against the Bucks in the second round. You know, hmm, that's a, that that whole season was a disappointment, though. But so it's like Goran Dragic has been there. Jimmy Butler is just going to be that guy kind of in a sense. Like it, they they had guys, too, that they are looking at y'all and they're like, yeah, we can beat these guys, too. So it's just like and it's especially when you're going up against Coach Spo. So it's just like, you know, it is what it is to me, at least. I didn't really care. Mm. I just wanted the finals to start already, and I told you this. I was like, yo, at this point, I was like, bro, I really don't care. I just want the finals to start, so <laughs> it's slow for y'all. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But speaking of the finals, that's a good segue. Game one happened, okay? And midnight struck. The clock struck midnight, and the Miami Heat turned back into a pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> turned. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's funny. That's, that's a double-sided compliment. That's just, yeah. Well, I'm going to get everything that's off. Hate. I'm going to get everything off. Of course that's it's hate. Is, they, beat, yeah. uh, they beat us. <laughs> yeah. Of course that's hate. Like, if you're going to beat us the way you did, don't come out here. And and you know what? Like I said, credit to the Lakers for coming out and doing everything they were. Credit to Anthony Davis for playing in the for playing in the paint. Like, everybody's been begging him to do for, like, the whole year. Like, he Anthony Davis made a concerted effort to punish the Miami Heat inside. Like it was crazy. Yeah, like I'm so used to him, even against small. wing. Yeah, but yeah, usually, even. Small. But we've been saying that all year, and Anthony Davis has never strayed away from his face up game. Game one, he came in and said, "It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> I rebound everything. Yeah. I dunk everything. I'm bigger than you." Like he did everything that people have been, and maybe it's maybe it's a case of this, you know. Bigs don't naturally like playing smaller guys because smaller guys get up under them, attack their legs, do everything. Mm. So they can't do that for the whole year. I get it. So Anthony Davis might have switched, flipped the switch in his mind. It's like four games, dominate in the paint. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can do that. Especially <laughs> yeah. when you went up against Nurk, Whiteside, Jokic, Plumlee. Just mad physical bigs. Yeah. yeah. So Bam Adebayo is... Bam yeah, Adebayo is a child, small. bro. He's small. Like, he's a big guy, but Dwight Howard is way bigger than him. Bam, Bam Adebayo injured himself on ba- Bam Adebayo injured himself on Dwight trying to put his shoulder into Dwight. I'm yeah. dead. That's how he injured himself. That's how he, he tried to give Dwight the shoulder and ended up on the ground. Yeah. And now I just have to question, 
why my my players are paper thin and we're getting moved <laughs> by this man. Bro, literally, Jay so Crowder was on Anthony Davis a lot. You're talking was about the like, Howard, though. My fault. No, no, I know. I was just back to what you, Anthony right? But Davis. it's like if you're gonna come out with that level of physicality and then you're gonna drop the shoulder one time and drop to the floor, it's like, well, dang, my guys must be weak as hell. <laughs> Y'all got a whole off season. Don't worry about it. Nah. Oh, uh, I would the say off season is shorter too. We're gonna talk about that soon. Game two is gonna be tougher. Uh, well, that's well, yeah, like, yeah, because uh, Bam out of bio actually isn't playing, but mm. it's it was always game twos are always tougher as a team. We normally punch people in the mouth when they're not used to our size, and like Miami's built to beat wingy teams, but we're beat, we're built to beat a team like a Miami and wingy teams. That's how I feel, and so when we're playing them, like. While they didn't give us their best effort after the first quarter, mm-hmm. they were up 13 on us doing the things they did. And then when we started doing the things we do defensively, it was really over. Flipped. Yeah. And yeah, you bro. can point at the shooting like we shot 39% on basically all open threes. If you're going to say, oh, you're not, you know, that's not, you, that's not sustainable. Well, it's open shots. So. You know what? In the NBA where people are supposed to hit their open shots, it should happen. Yeah. We aren't the best shooting team, but what is really the biggest part of that whole sustainability problem is our defense is... Your defense sus- was impeccable. And that is sub- sustainable, and we can be better. So uh, it's going to be tougher. They're going to switch things up because people are going to be in and out, you know? So mm. it's going to be tougher. I'm expecting us to have a little trouble I mean, in the first. I don't uh, even... I mean... I don't know. I feel like Goran might try to come out and play, but I don't remember exactly what they said he tore. It was something in his foot. So Plantar fasciitis. Something yeah, it like took that. Out, Some, yeah. I remember it took out Pau Gasol. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so. And it came back to haunt him. I'm used they, to foot injuries and bigger players. That's crazy. They did say he was questionable, so he's probably going to play, but it's not going to be 100% Goran. And then, Jimmy, nobody's one hundred percent in the finals. Did Jimmy, like, bro, yeah, his yeah. whole leg. Just... Did you see what happened though? Yeah, they aren't used bro. to playing our size. Yeah, Jimmy <laughs> tried to extend further to get around AD, and AD and didn't touch him. Busted his he ankle. Bro, his, his whole leg looked like it was about to break. I don't know, like, and there's a difference between certain players. Like, certain players are gonna try and go through you. If you play, if you play Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, they're gonna try and dunk on you. You know. Jimmy Butler's well, not him. the type of guy to go over the top on you. Yeah, but, and then here's the thing. Jimmy, like, because that's the thing. Like, against us, he was putting his head down and just going. But, like I said, it's bigger wings, yeah. I guess. But I just, I was looking at him personality-wise, and I was just like, yo, like, Jimmy. I was just like, yo, Jimmy, like. He came out hot. He did. He did. He cooked us. He was LeBron like LeBron was on him, crazy. and he went seven for ten. He, was, he cooked us. He did. It's true. <laughs> like, there's no, did. We're not denying. We're not denying that. But, uh, yeah, like, we just turned it up a little. Yeah, you know? like, literally everything that happened in game one, I expect it to happen. We'll see about game two. I expect y'all to win again because, like, there's just there are a lot of injuries, and I feel like Jimmy's going to be at maybe 90%. Goran's going to be at, like, 50%. Bro, I don't, I'm not hearing that. It's an injured like foot. I, we look at it. Uh, Jamal Murray came out off of a... Uh, off of a groin strain all season, all postseason, and he did all the things that he did. Bam out of bio, strained his shoulder in game four, in game five, came out and dropped thirty and fifteen, basically. Like I'm expecting yeah, right. Jimmy to go crazy. I don't even. And I looked at the ankle. I was just like, <coughs> the way he turned it. It didn't seem. It, bad. it looked worse the than it probably kind of is. Looked. Yeah, but I think he's gonna go nut, and I'm I'm all here for it. That's what I want to see. So yeah. Every time I wish everyone could be healthy though, but at the same time, every you know, time I doubt Jimmy, he proves me wrong. So I'm gonna just do that so he can prove me wrong, so we can have a good game. And props to them. I know Eric Spoels is so different, man. He's gonna come out with some shit. So Seriously. first off, I don't like credit to LA. I don't expect the Heat to come out and get blown out by thirty. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm-hmm. That's not the type of team they are. That's not the. I don't expect that at all. Coach. So they're gonna. It's gonna be a tougher game. It has to be. Yeah, they got the game one blues out of their system. Game one blues, he said. I mean, you're not lying. You're not lying. I'm saying. I'm just happy for AD. I'm happy for LeBron. One in his finals debut, Anthony Davis, 34 points. 
<clears throat> third high, tied for third highest among Laker greats with uh, I think uh, Shaq and probably James Worthy ahead of him. Uh, bro, like credit to him for being great. Yeah. So I just gotta do it three more here. times. I think it was like thirty four, probably like ten or nine, and like three blocks, five assists. Mm. He's out here looking good, you know. So yeah. We'll see what happens in game two tonight. Okay, well, leading, you know, man, you guys have been good with the segues today. I appreciate you. We told you it was going to carry you. Yeah, you know, and it's hard, you know, sometimes, you know, <laughs> it's my flu game today. It's like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, nah, not today. But anyway, how do you think the series is going to go? Heart of hearts. Try not to use game one too much as an asterisk because yeah, usually yeah. I don't try to use blowouts as the asterisk. That's yeah. Don't let that fool you. <laughs> like I've seen Lakers Twitter start going crazy after yeah, game bro. one. I'm not gonna come Lakers in three. Bro, I'm not Lakers gonna, in yo, two. Bro. I've been seeing mad at that, bro. I'm not gonna come out here and say sweep. I can't. Not for a team that has that much pride and plays that hard. Exactly. But I did so, watch the first game. I'm not an idiot. And also, another thing. I don't think the Lakers are going to hit as many threes as they did in game one. Really? Uh, bro, <laughs> we shot 39% <laughs> and all of them shots was wide open. I like, we're not going to hit 39%. But if we like the mark for us has been 30%. Imagine that 30% and we win games postseason, regular season. It doesn't matter because our defense. Is yeah, but it's also good. about the type of shots you get. And the Heat were just giving up threes at one point in the they're, first quarter. Yeah. Because they're not as big as us because they have to <clears throat> the paint. And that's really what it comes down to. Me they shoot. pack the paint better than anyone this whole entire series. Except for maybe the Nuggets just because they had a little more size. And they packed the paint and said, said beat us from three. And we did. And we're not going to do it that way all the time. We're not going to hit so many in a short period of time. In the course of the game, I expect us to, you know, keep throwing them up and mm. knocking some down. He said, "Keep throwing them up and <laughs> bro." Like LeBron didn't go. Like this is the thing. LeBron didn't go off. AD really didn't go off. You know, I don't know. Do you think they're gonna give Chris Dunn some minutes, like Chris, meaningful minutes? He's gonna get Chris Dunn. He's gonna get Chris. Minutes. He has to. Dragic tore his plantar fasciitis. He lights <laughs> this up in in the game in one of my favorite games all year. Mm-hmm. Uh, it might be my second favorite game, Laker game this season. We went to Miami. Miami hadn't lost at home. Uh, that was a time when we won like 17 straight on the road, something like that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> we uh, we went into their house. It was a hard fought game. That game was so. That was a great game. It was so close. Chris Nunn had like 19 in a quarter, six. right? Or something crazy. He had a lot in like one quarter, but he also had seven assists. This is the guy yeah. that can do it all, Bro. you know. Like he's, you know. And people who were wondering why he was out of the rotation, he had COVID. Oh. Yeah, like son needed. As to get soon back as as soon as it came, the NBA the came back. He he had COVID, so yeah. he had to go through that and then he go through the quarantine. Exactly. exactly. And like like we said, Eric Spolstra days. is is an elite coach. So by the time Kendrick Nunn came back, the rotation was already decided. Yeah. Mm. Like and just because he liked you during the regular season, this is the postseason, and I'm not just gonna yeah. let you hop in. Yeah. So that's what happened. Yeah. But because the Lakers started putting <clears throat> out Miami, he put in Chris Nunn. He got, I think he, his confidence went up. Yeah, in the garbage time, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's important Still. too. But he, got, he, got, he got his rhythm. And he is a more, ex- like, to me, he's their most explosive guard. Like, and I understand yeah, they have no Derrick Jones Jr., but with the ball in his hands, he's probably their most yeah. explosive. Yeah, G- Dragic ball. is he's crafty. Their most explosive he's not explosive. Handler. Yeah, exa- exactly. Exactly. He's their most explosive ball handler. Yeah. People can say Jimmy, but Kendrick Nunn has that first step burst. Mm-hmm. He does. Like in that, that's the type. Of, that's that's one of the first things you need to beat a team with size. Yeah. Like you need to have players. Like if you're not gonna match up with size, you gotta have players that can always break down the defense and True. make the defense collapse. Kendrick Nunn is like, outside of Jimmy, probably, probably their one guy who, who off straight of explosiveness, first step could probably get by his man. Mm. Like I said, Dragic, Tyler Hero, all these other guys, they're they're. Crafty, they're crafty. Yeah, they're more guards. finesse. Skill. They're yeah, skill guys. Yeah. Kendrick Nunn is just like I'm gonna blow by you off this lefty drive. <laughs> true, right. true. So who you got? It's oh. the Lakers are gonna win, and it disgusts yeah. me to say that, but the Lakers are gonna win their championship. How many? How many games though? It's five. 
I think five. It's five. It's been five this five. entire time, so a? why not? Yeah. It's five because Bam Adebayo is going to be proven a non-factor in this game. Yeah. In this series. He is. He already had. Yeah. A, excuse me. If he was 110% healthy, he still might be having a hard time. But with one working yeah. shoulder, it's clipped. Yeah. It's true. And Jimmy now is like, I don't, like, of course he's tough, so he's going to play every game. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't twist your ankle the way Jimmy twists his ankle not once but twice <laughs> in the same game. And mind you, because of the delay and everything that happened, Breonna Taylor case, everything, this finals is not three days in between every game. No, sir. You get a day off, you back at it. You get a day off, you back at it. And that's how it's going to go all the way through. Yeah, I, I've seen like LeBron and AD twist ankles all the Yeah, but I'm game. talking about, I saw Jimmy. Like the second time he twisted, I was like, oh my yeah, that's, that's what we're talking about. Like the same guy, and then like I said, he got heart, so I know he's gonna keep playing. But I'm just like, yeah, coming from somebody who has a full of teams who go through injuries all the time, I know what an ankle injury like that looks like. He twists his ankle the way he twists his ankle twice. Look like how Gordon twists his ankle, and Gordon was out for like two months. <laughs> so I'm just like, you. I'm like, bro. When Kawhi twists his ankle twice in the same game, yeah, like I was like, yeah, man, bro. he didn't come like, back the rest of the Kawhi series. was like. Screw this game. This is my career. Jimmy's just like, ah, oh, the finals. <laughs> yeah, like, he's, bro, he's in the finals. Foaming so at the mouth. Like, Jimmy not going to stop. Yeah, exactly. He's not going to stop. But I, I have Lakers in five. What about y'all? Lakers in five, man. Yeah, I'm going to go with five just because it could be four if we handle business. But Is this the first time we're like all in unison on the same decision? Probably. Wow. It's crazy. Fuck the Lakers. <laughs> When we win, because <laughs> job is not finished, so we got to focus. But when we win. Here it comes. Y'all not going to be ready for my rant, bro. Here we oh, go. Oh, my gosh. Here it comes. Should we just leave you? Like, Here it comes. On, should, okay. should you just come just, by yourself, just, bro? Whatever just just, airdrop, bro? Just airdrop a file, <laughs> the voice file. We're just editing it into the just pod. Just stay bro. home that day. Right. Please. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not. Y'all we might. going to hate me. I'm going to slap you. <laughs> we gonna come. We go. We go. Come to, nah, we go. Come to blows, bro. <laughs> because I like. I already know part of this speech. I already know part of this. I know part of the speech where it's already going. This man said I haven't memorized my head. No, 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 no. I'm sure there are gonna be a couple of curveballs he throws in on the speech that I wasn't expecting. But I've known seven long enough to know some of the points that are gonna come up. And will they involve I'm, the Celtics? No. Who cares about? It's not about that, bro. Interesting. Guys, if we was playing them, we would care about. Them. Just asking. Uh huh. Speaking, uh-huh. Speaking we of, we lost. So haha, uh-huh, get them off. Ha uh-huh. ha. <laughs> We're losers. I get it. Hang on one second. Let me look at the camera. Never do this to me again. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Now, Cliff, tell America you are a loser. Oh, <laughs> wow. All right, bro. We can get it outside right now. Yeah. We can get it outside right now, bro. Need to your like, I, don't, I, don't, I don't give a damn. I, don't, I, don't, give a damn. I don't give a damn. Yo, you know what the best? It's not the best part. <laughs> Here it comes. Seeing these, bro. Oh uh, okay. God, bro. It's right. so hilarious. Okay. The, it's a delirious. Just okay. <laughs> the psychosis of some of these fans, bro. Okay. okay. And some of this media, too. Oh, y'all going to hear bro. it eventually. Speaking of delirious. Job's not man. done. All right. We're doing this for Kobe Bryant. This is not for the fans. This is not for Jeannie Buss. This is not for anybody else. This isn't for Anthony Davis. This isn't for LeBron. This is for Kobe Bryant. All right? Next year, we win in it for the fans. Mm. Speaking of fans, though, I uh, highly doubt the Philly fans are excited right now. They are very excited. Oh, they are ecstatic. They're ecstatic right now. Huh? Anything is better than the dumpster fire that is Brett Brown. Really? Yo, we're as see. bad as I Doc mean, Rivers was with the, Clippers with the Clippers in the postseason, Brett Brown has been egregious for five years. Oh, yeah, I know that. It's disgusting. If I'm a Philly fan, I mean, you know what? I am not a Philly fan, so I don't know how y'all feel. I'm not a Philly fan either, but I could tell you a little bit of how Philly fans feel. Disappointment, regret, hate. <laughs> for? For the, the coach, the organization. Yeah. Like, I know Philly fans, Philly fans themselves, y'all can't bring yourself to hate Embiid regardless of how out of shape he be sometimes. Because you understand, that's the most talent you've had in your franchise in decades. Years. Years, probably. That's the most talented player they've had on their franchise since, what, AI? 
Probably, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, besides AI, it was yeah. like... Besides AI, well, and Drew Holiday. Yeah. <laughs> no, so, yeah, seriously. And Drew Holiday before... And Drew Holiday Drew before Holiday, Drew yeah, Holiday. Yeah, exactly, bro. Offensively, at least, because he was always killer defensively. He was always yeah, defensive. that's true, true, true. Let me be very clear, man. Spencer Hawes. <laughs> <laughs> Spencer Hawes. Wasn't he an all-star on that team? Spencer Hawes used to kill us. Yeah. <laughs> that pick and pop <laughs> long three pointer, he used to yeah. kill us. Oh, Spencer Hawes used to murder us on the long three balls for a big man. We'd be like, yo, we wait for him to crash the paint. Nah, he's sitting outside. Yeah. yeah. Like, he's just sitting <laughs> outside, bro. Face, yeah. I would say, so it, it kind of had, what did y'all think of how fast it went down? Because I thought it was pretty quick. As a yeah, black like, coach, bro. I was. Super surprised about how quick yeah. he got hired, bro. I was like, an African American got because it wasn't even a week, bro. It wasn't a, it wasn't week, a week, bro. It wasn't a week. Mutual decision between Steve Ballmer and the the Clippers brass and uh, Doc Rivers. I was like, nah, bro. They. F- I heard Kawhi went to the Clippers for Doc Rivers. In favor of? No, because Doc because he was going to be with Doc Rivers and. He was teamed up with Paul George. That's the reason. That's what kind of tilted him. I. That's what they were saying when he signed. Mm. So now I'm like, well, Doc Rivers, why would you leave if you have someone who wants to play for you? Because Doc saw the slander that was coming his way. He was like, <laughs> yo, I'm not going to lie. All right. So first of all, Doc Rivers is ass. If he didn't get another coaching job, I wouldn't have cared because he's probably the most paid coach in these past, like, 10 years uh not only that it's just like how are you gonna leave from a situation where you have expectation like anytime you do that you're a pussy to me i don't care if you go to another team that has expectation you're going to philadelphia with two kids who think they're the best shit on earth and it's been noted how their locker room is already jacked up because of the preferential treatment that they give their stars breach and they haven't even done anything yet and they're in the east and they have supposedly the most talented player in the league besides Kevin Durant. <laughs> you know, like, Joel Embiid is supposed to be that guy. Supposed to. But, uh, and then you have Ben Simmons there, and he's like, oh, my God. Fraud. <laughs> I will say this. Because Brett Brown is so damn trash, they will probably have a more competent offense and defense. That depends, though, because Doc Rivers had the best. Stop it. Because Doc had Tom, bro. Huh? Doc had Tom when he was with us. Our defense was based off Tom Thibodeau and KG. All right. Yeah, you're right. And you know what? What makes that worse? The Clippers was supposedly supposed to have the best defense in the league, and mm-hmm. you know, we saw how that turned out. Bro. When you have a two-time defending. Uh, I've been very clear about my attributions to how good the Celtics defense when Doc was there to Tom Thibodeau. To T tickety top. So right. we're going to see how it is. They have defenders all over the court, obviously. They could be the best defensive team in the league next year. I don't know what they're going to do on offense. They better figure it out. I, the East is looking interesting again, though, with KD coming back off interest, uh, injury. Bro, head coach I was, KD. I was thinking about head it. Coach K- head like, coach yeah. KD. <laughs> head coach KD. Head coach Not yet, not yet. Wait. But <laughs> 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 no, but like I was I was thinking about it. Like, KD's coming back. That means the best teams in the East. It's obviously Boston, Milwaukee, you know, um, uh, Brooklyn. I don't want to hear anything about Milwaukee until they get Malcolm Brogdon back, or at least get a serviceable wing. Get but, this ball. <laughs> but Milwaukee is still better than than Philly. So to me, Philly is probably at best they're the fifth best team. At worst, they're the seventh best team. In wait, the wait, 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 wait. What if Milwaukee got Vic? They're all the oh, right? I didn't even right? think about that. Because Vic wants out. About. That's true. But they don't want Eric Bledsoe. They got to find a trade for Eric Bledsoe first. Who's See, gonna, who's they, they, you know what? You, they got to they gotta bro. suffer through that. Yeah. Okay? Because <laughs> you had an option on who to pay, and you picked Eric Bledsoe over now Malcolm Brogdon. Now you, you got to suffer, bro. All, so the now, luxury tax. all of that. Yeah. You got to eat all that yeah. up, bro. Honestly. Because no one's taking him. No one's taking him for the amount of money you gave to him. I don't care what it was, 90 mil. I don't know what it was. It was stupid, hey, look, man. But Philly probably going to have an, an above average. Uh, well, no. I'm going to just say Philly's going to have another okay maybe good regular season but in the playoffs i really don't see them making it far like so, bro doc rivers playoff resume we all know how it looks like bro where they really gonna go that's the thing the furthest I, doc ever got was in the east so that's true too but this competition is gonna be tough 
because I don't care what Kyrie's talking about. The Nets are going to be good because <laughs> KD yeah. is the best. Milwaukee's going to do Milwaukee things. Boston is going to be good. The Raptors mm-hmm. might fall off this year, maybe, because really? it's like Frank's so? trying to kill a The Raptors approach. just said their main priority was re-signing Fred, so clearly there's a dedication. Oh, they're going to try and there's, yeah. there's a dedication to continuing to stay subpar. I just think they're going to be better defensively. The and Raptors? I know. I'm talking about the 76ers. And if one thing this year has taught me, like, you look at the Lakers, I mean, they have LeBron James, but their offense, their half-court offense isn't great. You look at the 76ers, they have the guys to be the best defensive team in the league. Obviously, number one, because of Joel Embiid, but he hasn't lived up to that potential at all. Maybe Doc gets him to do that. I don't know. But the rest of them, they have the guys to do that. And I think with Ben Simmons being the king of the fast break, he and he and uh, uh, Giannis are the kings of the fast break. <laughs> I think they'll be good. I think they'll be good. This is obviously better than Brett Brown. I honestly, you know, I came in here and slandered Doc Rivers before. Doc Rivers is still way better than Brett Brown. So, yeah, no, they'll be like, all right. It's good a, for them. It's a way better coach to have. Like, would you rather have Doc Rivers or Brett Brown? So, Doc overall, every time. overall, all of us believe that Please. Philly is going to improve. Please, yeah, they're going to improve. Yeah. Okay. Any coach, Tobias, when Tobias had his best year on the Clippers. That's true. But also, Tobias got to show me. I mean, Long Island's strong, yeah. but Tobias going to yeah. have to show me, bro. Yeah, you're going to have to be strong. Bro, Tobias, like, Tobias, to me, gave off the air of a player like, niggas who's hungry, and then they get paid, and they're like, bet. Yeah, and then when they tried hard, you're looking at them, and you're like, your game is tight, but you kind of weak, bro. Kind of <laughs> weak. <laughs> you kind of weak, bro. You kinda, like, much respect for him to getting his head slammed off the pavement against us and coming back and playing. Yo, you know, that's hard. Bro, he was, that's seeing, hard. he was seeing triple. But, but you mad weak. You mad weak because I don't know how many times he went over twenty against us. This is true, bro. Like, Philly. and he's their most talented wing. So I think Philly went in the right direction. I think the next step is to get a scoring wing. Do you think it would have been better to pick up Nate McMillan? Uh, yes. No. Yes. Nate McMillan is kind of reminds me of the cloth of Mark Jackson, of the cloth of like. Uh, Nate McMillan is an overachiever. And and is, and bro. more importantly, they need a leader, bro. They don't need. He does lead, bro. Do you know how hard it is to get a team that knows they don't have a real all star on their squad and get them to commit to defense all the time? Young. I'm They're dead. young, though. That's the thing. Philly young. Phil- and they don't have the talent, though. That's the difference. Indiana didn't have the talent. Philly do. And they didn't have expectation because they didn't have the talent. Who expected shit from Philly right now? <laughs> bro, all right, relax. come on. <laughs> Relax. With a brain. What do you Bro, expect from Philly? No, I'm if, asking. If what do you expect from Philly? If Simmons wasn't injured, I would No, no, no. What do you expect him. from Philly next season? Next season? I expect mm. them, like, with Doc there. The ceiling. The ceiling is a championship for them. But what do you expect? I expect them to go to the conference finals and lose to KD. <laughs> <laughs> like, KD is there. Like, I, I, KD. Honestly, I hang expect on, the semifinals exit. Wait, hang on. To be wait, honest stop. with you. Okay, go ahead. No, no. I was just, I was just saying I expect the semifinals exit. That's. I feel like that's the ceiling. And then, of course... Okay, my opinion, my opinion on them changes if they get Drew oh, Holiday back. <laughs> oh my no. god! If they have any sort of ball handler who can score, for bro, real? consistently, like you get Vic, you get you get um, what is it called? You get uh, Drew Holiday, like you just said. Trade for Spence. Trade for Spence. Trade, yeah. trade for McCollum. Trade like, for anybody who could put Try to work something out to steal Levert from steal Levert from Brooklyn. Try to do something. That ain't happening. So how are we going to get They're rid not. of uh, Al Horford? They don't need to get they rid of They don't need to get rid of Al. They, they need to put him in better, better positions, bro. They have okay. to be better. Period. Okay. Like, look, and, and the thing about Al Horford, historically, his best years come at the five. His worst years come at the four. What they did was Philly... On an impulse buy, they went out and said, if we could get that guy who's been the best MB defender in the East, he hasn't. They thought he was going to be a great four, and they thought Ben Simmons could be a great one. That was no, the they issue. had Clipper syndrome when they started Jeez. picking up a bunch of guys so the Lakers couldn't have him. Hey, that's well, mad funny. I don't think that's true. how they viewed it. I think that's, I how, think the that's how they... That's how the Clippers viewed it. I team. think that's how Philly viewed it, honestly. like Because the way I view it is just like, in terms of anybody in the East, there was no one who was... Standing his ground against Joel and B like Al. I think Al- Elton Brand fucked up. 
and he thought that they can do like some like eighties basketball with like great interior passing amongst bigs and shit mm, like that. That only works if both bigs are great passers. Which Al Horford only is a good Al passer. Horford, is yeah, Embiid is it? Well, yeah. Al Horford was a great passer for us. But that's the thing. Yeah. Like I think they messed up on that. No, I don't think it was like a we have to beat Boston, so let's get. I mean, they said, wasn't beating us before. They damn sure not beating us now. No, no, let him go. It wasn't like they traded for him to get him off of your team. Let him go. Y'all let him go. Y'all let him go. Am I bugging? So what happened Wait. was we asked Al to restructure his contract because yeah. early on we wanted to pay Jalen. Right. Mm. Right. And y'all let him go. The Kyrie situation came up. No, his opinion changed after Kyrie decided to dip because he, right. he was open oh, to restructuring right. his contract, remember? So why would he pick him up to beat you guys if y'all already... Uh, the way I looked at it, I was oh. just, like I said, anytime 76ers ran into us, Kyrie or no Kyrie, it all happened. And a lot of that was attributed to a lot of the reason we beat Philly consistently. Because of Al Horford. It was literally because of Al. And he's no longer on your team, so you don't have to worry about him. So that's why I don't think, I don't buy that. I don't buy that. I mean, that's true, I guess. I mean, you could look at it that way. I just, that's the way I looked at it. Because it was just like, everything, I didn't know Al wasn't going to resign with us until the day. Like, it was like, one day it was like, Al Horford exploring other options, right? Decided to not restructure contract. The very next day, Al signs three-year deal with Philly. I was like, that's crazy. <laughs> so I'm like, if that rumor drops that day, like he's not happy with Boston, he's going to restructure his contract, and you swoop in not even 24 hours later, that's what I'm going to think. Because it was just like, I thought about it, and I was like, Al Horford is better at the five. What's the point of signing him? I don't know. I didn't see the logic behind it outside of that, and that's what I mean. I if I saw logic. Up. Because they're illogical in thinking Ben Simmons could play the one yeah. with Joel Embiid. At Remember the we talked about it? We were like, they're better off just putting Al at, at point guard because he can shoot. I'm just like, <laughs> like, I was just like, what, what are y'all doing? Oh, but uh, speaking of Al Horford leaving after Kyrie leaves, will Kyrie and the Nets ever find out who is coaching their team? Ah, to find out next time on National Basketball Association. Anyway, let me tell you something. First comments we go going to address is, you know, the lighter comments. Kyrie made some comments. Talking about, you know, for the first time in his career, he looks down. He's like, this motherfucking can make that shot, too. Cap. I mean, let's think about it rationally. We always talk about Kyrie as the most skilled player ever, right? Yeah. Regardless of how I feel about him. In terms of skill level, it's either top, he's top one or two. Mm-hmm. KD might be the most skilled player he ever played with. Because he played with a rookie in second year Tatum. And as much as the potential is there, still a lot of room to grow. KD is a savant at his craft. There's nothing on the basketball court KD can't do. Is there any shot from anywhere on the court in any situation we think KD can't hit or won't be comfortable hitting? There's now let's ask about Kyrie. Not. You feel the same way about Kyrie, right? Exactly. So it's fair to say that somebody, people on those level, when you finally play with somebody like that, you can look at me. I'm sure, I'm sure KD Loki felt like that about Steph sometimes in practice. Yeah. Like this, true. this motherfucker yeah. can hit that shot too. You're right. Because it's certain players. Who, now, everybody's going to be like, LeBron, you play with LeBron, you play with LeBron. LeBron's a freak of nature. LeBron is not a, no discredit, no discredit. Please, let me stress, no discredit. LeBron is not an offensive savant in terms of putting the ball in the hole. He never has been. He's been a freak of nature with an elite passing gift. Who's learned, said, yeah. They always said he was more like magic, magic than, than Michael. Michael so. Exactly. Like, there are certain scoring savants where if you put the ball in their hands, on the offensive end, you don't know what's going to happen, but you know there's there's it's highly likely the ball is going in the basket. Kyrie's like that. KD is like that. So when it. yeah, get anything, anything they want. How y'all feel about those comments? Because to me, when I heard it first, I was just like, I thought about his career and I was like, people are going to take this the wrong way because he's played with LeBron. And Celtics fans are going to get hurt because we see how how much we love Tatum, right? Something <laughs> always gotta bro. have some thoughts on there, bro. I, bro. I know my, I know my crowd. I know my, I know the people I hang out. With. Bro, but I'm it's just like crazy. people, are, people are gonna bring up those type of things. But it's just like if you really think about it in terms of offensive skill set, they're not thinking of the Celtics at all. Let's let's be honest. No, I said Most Celtics fans are hurting. <laughs> Celtics, y'all so entitled thinking that people think about y'all. 
I don't understand why you have to be hurtful, bro. People do think about it. I don't understand, bro. Everyone, you open your mouth to be hurtful. Because no, 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 because you know what I'm tired of. You know what, producer man? Have you ever heard such slander? Have you ever heard? He said yes, ladies and gentlemen. So he said seven's a dick. Anyway, anyway, this is the first time I'm hearing anyone bring up the name of Jason Tatum in regards to this. Wow, every single person thought of LeBron. Wow, it was never about anything. Did I not bring up LeBron first? You did. No one thought about it. And then did I not asterisk it by saying Celtics fans thought? Oh, okay, okay. Dude, like, why are you coming at me? Why are you coming at me? Why are you? But I asterisked it by saying Celtics fans before that. that. And that's the point. Celtics fans thought this could be anything but LeBron James. I am dead. I don't know. I literally, you know what? You were just trying to hurt, bro. Bro, bro, I'm not. I said, them be fighting words anyway. Keep going. When I. When I read it, I took it as like in terms of clutch shots, not like how you guys went to death about the skill and stuff. Because I mean, when I read that, immediately I thought about the game where um, LeBron was on the Cavs. They were versus the Wizards. Oh my god! And then oh my god! He, you remember that? And then he, Kevin Love, threw the pass down. He caught it like a like a fucking bro. It was tight end. I don't even know, bro. Like, it was a tight end. He, was tight end. he caught it, and there wasn't that much time on the clock left either. He caught it, knew where his feet were supposed to land, turned around, and just cash. Pa- he banked it, but still. Cash. Still cash, bro. And Bradley Beal was playing. It was Beal he hit it on, right? Bradley Beal was playing. It wouldn't have mattered who was playing the defense. That was good defense. I know. I'm saying he was like, playing the best defense. You could have played in that situation. could have played on LeBron. Yeah. Listen. LeBron's arguably one of the greatest, like, not really one. He's LeBron's top one five. Of the greatest of yeah. all time. LeBron's top five. KD is the best scorer of all time. Mm-hmm. And Kyrie is one of the most skilled Skill players, players of all time. There's nothing left to be said. What has to be said, which is actually, it's kind of like a, <laughs> I think it's a bad omen for the rest of this Bro, the worst omen, bro. The Nets hire Steve Nash. Wow, what their offense <laughs> is going to look like. They're going to be so great. You know KD and Kyrie had to be able to sign off on that. Like, oh, my god! And all of a sudden, we hear... We KD don't have a coach. We don't... Ha- I could be coach. No, 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 not could be coach. I feel like we don't have a head coach. KD could be a head coach. And you know I what? could be a head coach. Nani? We gonna have to see how this pans out because honestly, bro, I don't even have the energy to talk about Kyrie right now. He's always Seriously? saying some bullshit. Look, <laughs> the way I look at it is this: if Kyrie was by himself and was viewed as the best player on this team, this would be concerning. <laughs> Kevin Durant is here, ladies and gentlemen, and you know what's uh, crazy? You're right. You're right. Kevin Durant can't be the head coach. You yeah. know why? Because when Kevin Durant was last seen on the on the basketball court, what do we all think? That's the best basketball player on the face planet in the yep. world. In the world. Yep. So it's like, like I said. If this was a Boston type of situation and Kyrie was saying this, I'd have been like, "Oh my god!" But he's playing with a player who's clearly better than him. Yeah, true. And KD knows Steve Nash, and Steve Nash is a leader of men. All right, yeah, he is. Steve Nash is a leader of men, and we all understand. We at, it's time we look at KD and tell him to be a leader of men. You know, no, no, that's mm-hmm. and and I think if this season is going to go as well as they wanted to, KD and Kyrie both have to be able to look at Steve Nash and be like, even though, because Steve Nash is a two-time MVP, never been to the finals, so there's that. But in terms of taking a team, in, in terms of somebody who, who took their career to as far as it could go, with the highest potential, at the peak, with the physical attributes they were given. Think about Steve Nash's story, bro. Wasn't a highly touted college recruit. Like, I think he got one college offer, right? From somewhere in the somewhere in the States. I don't exactly I remember when. Shout out to the... um. Knuckleheads podcast. They did a they did a um interview with Steve Nash on one of their episodes and I learned about Steve Nash. Mm. Like for real. And it was just like from him to come from where he came from and to do everything he did in his career. Like I we all understand like he shouldn't have as many MVPs as he does, but the fact of the matter is he does. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did all that. He came from where he did and he made the most of what he had. All right. So saying that, knowing that, I think anyone else in the locker room would be comfortable listening to this man. I think I think the most important thing here is just to know that, look, Kyrie, we understand whatever your emotional state is, whatever it is, cool. You're one of the most skilled players ever. Steve Nash is one of the most skilled point guards ever. KD is one of the general generational talents we will never see again. 
you're at a point in your career where if this flops, people are going to shit on you, bro. So regardless of how you, your personal feelings about who could be a head coach and what your role is, mm. just know the one role you should be aspiring to is a winning role. Like, be a winner. You want to be successful? You want your name to change? You want the story to change? Be a winner. That's all I got to say about that. So, you know, um, that's what we have for this week, ladies and gentlemen. Sure, At, there's some more craziness to come. No, nah, definitely. You know, the finals are going to still go on. You know, there's a little bit more Clipper slander. Psych, y'all suck. No, I lied. I like slandering the Clippers. I've been getting it in a little yeah, bit. Bro, you didn't time. get out of your system. No, nah, I didn't. <laughs> but um, tune in next time, you know. Special, special, special this week. You know, I know uh, this week two episodes is dropping. You know, the last episode we recorded and this one. So, you know, by the time you see this part of the episode, you're going to be like, oh, my gosh, I already saw the last episode. Clifford already came out. I really loved it. I know you did. You're welcome. <laughs> this is the Recreational Hoopers podcast. And until next time, you know what I'm saying? <laughs>